So you're working with Power Query and you have a lot of conditional statements to map values to a certain outcome. And you can see that your code gets cluttered, but Power Query does not have a switch statement. In this video, I'm going to show you what you can use instead. So let's say you're working with a small table like the one on the screen here. It contains a, a table with a single column and abbreviations of different countries. Now, if you want to map those to the full name of a country, something that I see happening a lot is people go to add column, say add a custom column, and they start making an if statement. So the if statement is a control structure, which allows you to put some conditions in here. So I could say if my abbreviation is the UK, then I want to see United Kingdom as a full name of the country. This continues. So if you want, you can add this line, copy paste it to the next one, and then you can write if it's an L, you want to see the Netherlands, etc. <laughs> There's a lot of different items here, so you're going to have to continue this. Uh, I already did this for you, so we don't have to wait, but it could look like something like this. So you get a big, big if statement that maps each one of these. And unfortunately, some of the code is repeated here. Now that's not very efficient. If you compare this to a switch statement that is available in DAX that you can find in Excel, then you would see that with switch, you just have cleaner code and it's just easier to maintain. Let me show you the example. So we have a switch statement here and this switch statement is basically checking out like, Hey, this is in Excel. What I'm doing here is I'm referencing the abbreviation column on my left and it's telling you if it's UK return United Kingdom. If it's NL return Netherlands, if it's friends, return friends. Now, if we had something like that in Power Query, our life could get much easier. Let's see what we can do. So Power Query has something else that we can use. Uh, it's a function that makes use of a record to look up values. So let's say we want to replace the if statement that we have here. There is a, a function called a record field or default. You can look this up on Power Query how. And record field or default is a function that fetches a value of a named value within a record and returns either the default value or the value itself if it finds it. So this is great. What that means is that you can create a record and then you can use record field or default value to look up if the country is available in the record and get the answer. Now, if we would use that for ours, I build a record here. So this record that we see as a record that says, I met the UK to United Kingdom, NL to Netherlands, friends to friends. This looks very much like the switch statement we were just looking at. So how would we use this? I'm going to, I'm going to copy this, this record, and we're going to make a switch version. So this table is now unmapped, but we could now add a custom column and say like, okay, I want to have the country name. And I'm going to paste the record that we just had there. I'm going to paste it in here. And I want this to be a very old name. So I could say like let and my record. So the definition of my record is the record that we have here. Now, what I want to do is I want to make use of the records field or default function. So we could now say uh, look up value. This is my second variable. And now I can make use of the records field or default function that we just saw in Power Query how. Now, as a first, as a first argument, it always requires the record to look things up in. So in our case, that is my record that we just defined here. And to look up our value, we can use the abbreviation column. Oh, let's keep things in order here. So the abbreviation column is going to be here and I'm going to write in lookup value, which basically tells Power Query to return the lookup value variable. I press OK. Now this is great because what you can see from here 
is that I've been able to add all of the mappings in a single function here. But now, but let's now say that I'm missing a value. So if I change the source table and I would add another country like, uh, let's say Germany, I'll write Jur here. If I then look over here, it shows that it's missing that value and it returns a null. But something that's great and very similar to what the switch function does is record field or default has another argument which refers to the default value to return if it doesn't find the value it's looking for. So in this case, it's looking for the jur value and it doesn't find it. But we can add a third argument to record field or default. And we could, for example, say other. And by doing that, you always have a fallback value for when your lookup misses. Still, I could hear you say, well, maintaining a record like this, that's quite bothersome. I might instead want to use, let's for example, say a table. Like I want to, I want to keep those values in a table and pass that over here. Well, we could do that as well. So let me just duplicate this. <coughs> and what I'm going to show here is I've created a table with all of the mappings. And this table here is very specific because I want to I want to show you how you can pass the table to the record field or default function by reshaping it. And we're going to use a function for this. It's a function which is record from table. So I'm power query how you can go to record from table and it will tell you that the record from table creates a record from a table where each row is a record formatted as the name is the name and the value is the value. Now there's something unique to this function and we're gonna see it if we scroll down. The function requires you to have a column that has the, the name name and have a, you need to have a column with the name value. So a setup like here, name and value is perfect. That's why I created that here. So we have the same mapping, but we have a table with name and value. And this is what we can do. So this lookup table, we're going to leave it intact. There we go. But instead of passing the my record that we created earlier, I actually want to reference that table, transform it into a record, and then pass it dynamically. So what does this look like? I'm back at the table that we just looked at. If I say a record from table and I close my brackets, we're going to see that this table that we have is now going to show as a record, which is exactly the form that we need. Let me just undo this. Okay. So most likely you would want to keep the table in the shape it is. You might use it for other things, depending on what your setup is, but I could just come here to the, to the new custom statement that we just created, but we're, we're going to adjust it. So the, the let my record, instead of providing the hard coded record, we could say record from table. And this time we're going to reference the lookup table, lookup table. That's it. So I can reference the lookup table. If we make changes to that lookup table, it's going to flow through. And then the record field or default function is going to pick up the value from there. And now I seem to have a syntax error somewhere. There's a three here. There we go. Now the beauty of this is if I go to my original lookup table, I can go to source. I can change the value here. Let's say NetBalance 2024. Press OK. And now if I come back to this next version that we use, it picks it up dynamically. So that shows an alternative version of using switch. And this is just one way in which you can use switch, which is for mapping input values to a particular output value. In a later video, I'm also going to show you how you can use an alternative for switch with conditions so that whenever a condition is true, a corresponding result is returned. But I think it's enough for this video. If you like these kind of M concepts, we released a book on the M language. It's called the definitive guide to power query M. And we delve into, into records, list objects, and really try to make you understand what the M code is that the Power Query interface generates for you. So if that's something that you like, Amazon, Pact, O'Reilly, and all the other big retailers, they sell the book. And with the 750 pages, 
I think you're really going to find added value there. But don't take my word for it. Just have a look and report back what your thoughts are. And that's it for today's video. So I, uh, I hope to see you next time. Uh, 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 uh,